Hello everyone, I am Michael, your host for this final episode of the Testimony for Yeshua. This episode will not feature a guest speaker, but there is a special component being presented as a bonus for our future ready audience. I would like to begin with a short history of how the eternal truth prophecy occurred. The start of it was in November of 2021 when Joe Biden attempted to force everyone in the United States to get vaccinated for COVID-19 against their constitutionally guaranteed freedoms according to the 14th Amendment which prohibits the denial of life, liberty, or property without congressional action. By overstepping his authority, Joe Biden became the first dictatorial president in the history of the United States and the Supreme Court ruled in the people's favor by nullifying Biden's edict that attempted to force every citizen in the United States to receive his mark in order to get a job, buy goods, or possibly even seek medical attention. The prophecy in John's revelation has come to pass, and the second beast has arisen to power in the world as the Antichrist and a Roman Catholic. I was personally struggling with new requirements and working conditions on my job as an unvaccinated worker, and I am still unvaccinated. I had to make a choice based on my faith. I could get vaccinated and disregard what the Holy Spirit was telling me in my heart that this was it. Or I could follow God's will for me and leave my job. Without any prospects and acting on faith alone, I quit my job before the Supreme Court shut down the beast attempt to force everyone to receive his mark. From that moment in November 2021 until Christmas morning of 2021, I prayed and I was being ministered to by the Holy Spirit who taught me very specific instructions about the path of the Archangel Michael. I was taught the rules of prophecy and the rules for the prophet. On Christmas morning, I sat down to write the notes of these instructions as I had been doing since leaving my job. On this morning, I began writing a poem. This one poem became 12 poems, and the Holy Spirit guided me through specific scriptures to read and then to write each of these poems. Afterwards, I printed these documents and mailed them to 12 recipients all across the country prior to 7 January. Within this poetry is the prediction of Russia's invasion of the Ukraine that did not happen until several weeks after I had written the poetry. There are other predictions within this poetry that have not yet occurred, but I know that they will. While the story overall does not stop there, I will tell the audience truthfully that I have written several poems in my lifetime that have predicted future events, and I have even written poetry that predicted the Hamas-Israel War. In Great Britain, there is a false prophet who calls himself the modern-day Nostradamus. He says that World War III will start between China and the United States, but he is a fraud. World War III has already started, and I told several witnesses that it would begin in Jerusalem. This prediction was always In the poem titled Antediluvian Revelations, a poetic retelling of the book of Enoch, the prophet. The prophecy has been available to the entire world on YouTube since September 2023. You can find it in Season 3, Episode 2. I'm not going to bother reading that poem in this final episode of this podcast series, but I am going to read the poem that predicted the real beginning of World War III because it actually began in the Ukraine in 2022. I remind the audience that this prophecy has been in the possession of 12 different religious leaders in the United States since the first week of January 2022. This prophecy is a series of 12 shape poems. A shape poem is a type of poem that creates a shape with the length of its lines. The instructions provided with this prophecy direct the reader to follow the reading of each poem by reading a specific scriptural passage in John's Revelation. If the reader has accepted the Holy Spirit in the second birth, then the Lord's message will be clearly known to that reader. I will identify which passage to read in reference to each of these prophetic poems presented here today. Before I get started, I will remind the audience that the original Apostle John was the author of the Revelations, 
but he was not the author of any other book in the New Testament as it appears in that text today. There is an epistle of John, but that text is a fraudulent edition by the Antichrist. There are many arguments that claim the Revelations was not written by the same person who wrote the Gospel according to John. These claims are correct, because the Gospel according to John was not written by the same man who was the original disciple of Jesus. The true apostle to Jesus wrote the Revelations while in prison on the island of Patmos. Unfortunately, there is no text in the New Testament that has not suffered some pagan editorialization, and the Revelations appears to be no exception. I continue to inform the audience that any appearance in the text of the New Testament that claims Jesus was the Son of God has been the result of fraudulent editing by pagans and heretics. The concept of Son of God contradicts the Book of Enoch, other Old Testament documents, and the Gospels according to Matthew, Mark, and some of Luke. None of the Gospel according to John is trustworthy. I will read each of the poems one at a time and provide the reference passage in the Revelations. I will not be reading the text in Revelations, so I recommend the audience follow along on their own. In some cases, I will provide a brief explanation of what the poem might mean. I may also point out what it has predicted that has already happened in some cases. I now present to you the prophecy titled, The Little Book. The Five Wars of the First Woe Early in the twentieth century mankind defended God, and the time had come for a messenger to announce an era of great sorrow, destruction, and vision and vengeance. The first war spilled blood, hurled fire in a hailstorm, and burned the earth to ashes until not even a worm would crawl within the ground or in a deep trench. It left twenty million men dead and caused teeth to clench, angered by the losses, and that the end was not a win. The most hateful and evil of men aspired to do it all again. The second woe was worse than the first, spreading far and wide. Across the land, in the skies, and on the waters, men died. When men released a power like starlight that fell to earth, the second war ended, and to a third was given birth. The fourth war was fought in darkness and cold, but it never ended, and its time is growing old. The great eagle controlled the world's sky, threatening all who waged war would die. But the bald bird gave birth to new weapons, dropping more stars from its mighty talons. The people of the earth trembled with fear, believing that the death of all was very near. The high-perched avian, believing in its might, launched the fifth war with a new kind of flight. Low in swarms like locusts with wings whirling, Overhead the sound of thunder and wind whistling, their iron bodies had faces, eyes, and scorpion tails, inflicting wounds upon thousands yearning for death. Their slaughter only ended with the need to catch a breath. Believing the threat was no more, the great bird ended that war. The first war was over. Revelation chapter 8, verses 6 through 13, and chapter 9, verses 1 through 6. This poem is an explanation of what the verses in Revelations predicted. To be more helpful to those who still might not understand it, the prediction is about the wars occurring since the beginning of the 20th century. There have been five major conflicts in the world since the return of the millennia more than 100 years ago. These wars included World War I, World War II, the Cold War, the Korean War, the Vietnam War, and War in the Middle East. Despite there being heretics who claim that the United States is not in any Bible prophecy, the proof is undeniably there. Regardless of the fact that the heretics who have made this claim have doctorate degrees in theology, they are heretics who tell lies to all of the world. I am not going to even say their names, but they will, have, they will know their shame soon enough. The following is the second poem of twelve. The Sixth War Before the Second Woe in its pride and throughout all its great stride, over all the world the eagle would glide and proclaim itself to be greatest of all. But this hubris would only lead to its fall. As the sixth messenger surrounded a trumpet, a new evil launched horror and torment, the eagle had hatched a flock of its own, waging a war like had never been known. The falcon and vulture watched with interest, 
knowing the eagle would soon need some rest. Then they would strike and take what they wanted, after circling above the prey that they had hunted. Exhausted and grieving for all of its losses, the third, the war-tired board, let the others be bosses. This was the start of the second woe, stated here for all to know. Revelation chapter 9, verses 7 through 12. The arrogant leaders of the United States determined that it is the most powerful nation in the world and waged war all over the planet and killed millions of innocent people for more than 100 years without anyone else in the world being able to stop the slaughter. All of the murder brought on the second woe, which was COVID-19, a plague that was prophesied to kill one-third of the population of the earth, altering the predictions of prophecy by taking actions to prevent them is defiance of God, for which there will be a price to pay. Announcement of the Second Woe Before the Seventh War The great announcement of the sixth messenger prophet filled the skies if God's angel had blown a great trumpet. God's voice was like thunder amplified by a gigantic speaker declaring his judgment on mankind from his golden altar. He commanded the releases of three plagues and great fear, spreading through the skies from a central point outward in all directions of earth. A multitude of people, a third of mankind, will die in this day, month, and year. Millions of people transported the plagues to others, spreading from their mouths like a smoke that smothers, infecting the lungs and chest like wearing heavy armor. They all became infected, breathing the fire, smoke, and sulfur. A great multitude will die from the harm of these three stages. The colors dark blue, red, and yellow are that of the phages. Mankind spreads the plagues throughout all of the planet. They claim that there was no God or his judgment. From their mouths they swore that he was not real, declaring that man's science was more able to heal. God's judgment upon mankind for its iniquities brings death and suffering caused by disease and those who survive will refuse to repent. Without knowing God, mankind will lament, because they only pray to false gods and idols, who cannot walk or talk, being deaf as walls. They will continue to murder, rape, and steal. They lust for wealth, because they think it real. There is one small light shining for all to see it, repentance and acceptance of the Holy Spirit. Revelation chapter 9, verses 13 through 21. While the science of mankind was able to prevent the death of billions of people, the action was a defiance of God's judgment. Men will believe in science to save themselves when God determines the need to punish mankind, but men will not believe in science when it proves that Jesus Christ was not the Son of God. The eternal truth was given to the Apostle John in his vision of the little book, he knew that Jesus was not the Son of God, but he also received the instructions from God to conceal this truth because this one truth becomes the means by which God will judge all of mankind. Those who are willing to have humility and accept the correction of the eternal truth about God's Holy Spirit and that Jesus was not the Son of God will receive the promise Yeshua made before he was murdered by pagan Romans and heretic Jews. The last war predicted in the Revelations had not yet started when this poem was written, but it began almost one month later to the day. That war is widening now in Israel and would become World War III. The Seven Wars and the Little Book <clears throat> What in the past God commanded hidden would now be known just as it is written. There is no more time to waste. It must be done with haste. Reveal this mystery of God and expose the lies. It must become known before another man dies. Far across the sea and standing in a new land, he holds the truth in his outstretched hand. Take it and consume it, but know this, its sweet flavor will not bring bliss. All know in the mouth that these words are right. Digesting the truth will cause the stomach to fight. How could it be that all did not see the lie that misled so many now dead. God is eternal. He loves us and wants us to love each other. He wants to forgive us because Mary was a human's mother. God is only one and is the Holy Spirit. Jesus said this, 
Did nobody hear it? Revelation chapter 10, verses 1 through 10. The second plague was not officially declared over until much later in 2022, when the seventh war, the war in Ukraine, had already started. However, the truth is that the second plague continues the same as the first known as influenza. And these plagues will again threaten many lives in the very near future. Vaccination will not protect anyone from these plagues because they are God's judgment for mankind. This next poem contains a prediction that has not yet happened. But its occurrence will be a significant sign of what is to happen in the very near future when it does happen. There will not be much time between this occurrence and Judgment Day. The Seventh War During the Second Woe It came upon mankind during the second plague that the falcon and the vulture a war would wage. Two witnesses to the truth of God and his judgment proclaimed it all in hatred these words did foment. The heathens and the pagans trampled the Holy Land. They made it a place where no man could again stand over the horizon Across the Euphrates and more, the power of starlight was sent unlike before. The words within this prophecy, written during 1,260 days, were decried as a mindless fallacy, but it was very true in so many ways. The heathens and pagans were horrified at what it all meant, because it told of how they had caused mankind's torment. Golden censers, goblets, angels, and all human beings are vessels of the Holy Spirit. That is what it means. Revelation chapter 11, verses 1 through 6. One of the curious problems with the revelations that has also affected the book of Enoch is that there is not a correct sequence of events. This problem also occurs in other documents in the New Testament and the surviving Ethiopic manuscript of the book of Enoch. Discovering this problem when studying the book of Enoch has enabled a greater understanding of how this occurred in the revelations. The parchments of those ancient times were most likely not bound nor kept with any accurate tabulation of their content. Prophecy is often non-sequential also. I could probably go into a lot more detail about the nature of prophecy, but I think that might be something for another time. This next poem is a prophecy about this program and its purpose. I can tell our audience that I did not know this was going to be the case until I began writing the script. The Holy Spirit has been my guide through all of it, and I have no fear about saying the truth of it all. While I understand that I risk being accused of self-fulfilling a prophecy, there is more to this next poem than I could ever cause to happen of my own accord. The Witnesses of the Eternal Truth The two witnesses may be found together and with love. They were brought together across the globe by God above. In them there is hope for the olive branch of peace and light from the knowledge of the truth that they know is right. By their faith they will live when all others will die. They made the right choice not to believe the lie. They wield the power of God and His might, and He protects them from all harm. They will drink from His cup when the earth has dried up. They will dine at His table when no other is able. They will spread the word of the eternal truth across the earth, knowing that they may die proclaiming Christ's true birth, that Joseph was his father, and all are children of God. Jesus delivered God's true message in pain. He died and arose from the dead where he had been lame. He walked again among men to prove God's forgiveness of sin. Revelation chapter 11, verses 7 through 11. The next poem might be thought of as a companion poem to the one I just read. Companion poems are quite common throughout history, and it seems that these poems contain related prophecies. I can guess about what these poems are predicting overall, but I will leave that to the audience to decide what to think or believe. I remind all who are listening or viewing our podcast to review the text in the Revelations, pray and ask God for understanding, and open your hearts and minds to the truth of the Holy Spirit, who will guide you. To know the eternal truth. Death and resurrection before the third woe. Although the beast who was foretold took measures to kill the two witnesses who dared to defy his will, they never had any fear. God was always near. For three and a half days, the bodies laid 
for others to see and proclaim they had made a mistake to believe in God instead of science. All this was written by one with great prescience. God entered their bodies once again, and they stood on their feet. The sight of it all terrified many who saw them walk in the street. In a blinding moment of great light and thunder, a miraculous sight that made mankind wonder, the two resurrected ascended in clouds, the event witnessed by large crowds. The earth trembled all over from within its very core. The quake killed thousands and injured many more. Because of prayer, the second woeful plague ended, but God is still offended. The third woe will come very soon. Revelation chapter 11, verses 11 through 14. This prophecy is a curious one, and it might be the most perplexing since there is evidence that all of what it describes has been happening since this series of poems was written on 25 December 2021. There are a lot more of these earthquakes and disasters occurring all over the world, and all of these are the signs predicted in the revelations. The next two poems might be considered companion poems also, but these prophecies explain the reasoning for what has happened in Christianity over the last 2,000 years. The corruption of Christ's message and purpose was one of the most important predictions appearing in the book of Enoch, but very few scholars have paid attention to it. Enoch predicted that the sixth era of mankind, the time of Christ, would be followed by the corruption of mankind in the seventh era. Since the time pagans murdered Jesus, Mankind has suffered countless wars and pestilence because pagans corrupted the message of the Christ. Anyone who denies my claim that the Holy Bible is a fraud need only consider the horrors of war and suffering that have happened over the last 2,000 years. If the Holy Bible were true, then the Messiah would have brought peace to the world a long time ago. Instead, pagans murdered him and created a lie to cover up their crime. The truth of Christ's message has been perverted by paganization, and the New Testament text is evidence of how Satan has attempted to take out his revenge on mankind by posing as the author of the Gospel according to John. Satan was the Son of God who defied God and transgressed on earth to corrupt mankind in its early days of evolution. Those who worship Jesus as Son of God are actually blaspheming God because it has been Satan who has tricked them into this falsehood of worshiping a man as if he were a God. The details are in the book of Enoch, but the audience may find the modern retelling of the book more understandable. Please consider listening to the podcast reading of Antediluvian Revelations, a poetic retelling of the book of Enoch the Prophet. The program is available on many listening platforms and the Polly at Lowishit Publishing YouTube channel. The show is organized in three seasons, so be sure to look for all three. Cast Out of Heaven In a time before now, but not so long ago, the story of a child born into the house of David became known to the world because God made it so. A star in the heavens shone brightly, illuminating the way. The women, her husband, and others found a manger to stay. The scorn of God's creation traveled to that place. He wanted to destroy the human race. He watched and he waited. They had all they had a love he hated. A son was born, and Satan forlorn. A great battle ensued. Man's hope was renewed. Michael led God's angels to a major victory. The child became a man and in faith grew. Isaiah had foretold of him and they all knew. Satan fell to earth bound in a prison of his own making. He laughed at God seeing that the earth was right for the taking. Revelation chapter 12 verses 1 through 12. There should be no mistaking that the prophecy here explains the truth of Christ's birthright, just as I have explained it in this series. Yeshua was an innocent human being. He was not the Son of God, because Satan was the Son of God. The distinction has sorely been missed by a great many people. Satan takes his revenge. 
When he realized his mistake and the child was not a fake, Satan plotted to ruin mankind, planting a lie nobody would find, hidden in plain sight for all to read it. The worst lie ever told was a scurrilous edit. The heathens wanted to believe it was true and that it was something only God could do. It made even more sense to those pagans of old. Having more than one God was better than gold. The Jew they had killed had become a God. It made more sense, and Caesar gave it a nod. Although Satan was cast out and no longer welcome, this lie led to others that grew into a great kingdom. He made them to worship idols and pay him tribute, but he could not erase the message hidden in an unseen passage he overlooked and ignored whom Jesus called Lord. The message hidden in an unseen passage turns out to be in the Testament of Jude. I recommend reading this one epistle in the New Testament more than any other because it foretells the future that we are all about to see come to pass. Additionally, the epistle of Jude refers to the book of Enoch. This occurrence is the only one like it in the entire New Testament, but the pagans who edited the text of the New Testament overlooked it in their heresy. Jude's epistle provides the connection to the truth within the book of Enoch because Jesus knew this text, the same as all of his disciples. He would not have contradicted it, and none of his true apostles from Galilee would have dared to defy the truth within it either. The pagans who editorialized the Gospels did not know Galilean culture because they were ignorant pagan Romans. The next two poems are also companion poems, but few people know what these two poems demonstrate more clearly about what is said in the Revelations. There are actually two beasts predicted in the Revelations, and the beast is not the same as the Antichrist. These prophetic poems provide a better understanding of how the entire world has been in biblical prophecy, because the Holy Bible's content is not just about a small patch of dirt in the Middle East. The prophecies are about the entire planet and its future destiny when corrupted and led to destruction by the beasts, one from the land and one from the sea. I caution the audience not to mistake the identity of the first beast described in these poems, but I am pretty sure none will mistake the identity of the second beast. Rise of the first beast. The wealthiest of men came to power from a sea of red, with the prowess of a leopard and the strength of a bear, he roared like a lion and made everyone have fear. Other nations and his enemies wanted him dead. He spoke with great pride in his accomplishments, proclaiming his greatness amid compliments. The plague wounded him, but he was healed. His lasciviousness will soon be revealed. He reigned over all with an iron rod, secretly cursing and blaspheming God. Empowered by the evil of an idolatry and greed, his minions were imprisoned only to be freed. No other nation dared to oppose him and his power as long as he was protected within his ivory tower. He found himself deposed in a flurry of theft and lies. He had a plan to make sure he lives and everyone else dies. Revelation chapter 13, verses 1 through 10. The last line in this poem is a description of how the President of the United States has a secret underground bunker designed to be a safe haven in the event of global thermonuclear war. The plan this first beast created was to build this bunker because it has always been Satan's plan to cause global thermonuclear war in order to destroy God's creation on earth. These men... The presidents of the United States are Satan worshipers and they have a misguided belief that they will survive in a bunker underground being able to emerge afterwards to rule the world again. The problem is that there will be nothing left for them to be rulers of and they will most likely die from radiation exposure anyway. There is no winner in a nuclear war. Rise of the Second Beast During the turmoil of the second woe, an earthly old goat spoke words not his own. 
he had sold his soul, and a great debt he did owe. He gambled great wealth on a chance, and it was blown. Everyone knew his time had come, and his days would end. He claimed miraculous wonders, but they were all just pretend. The dark queen laughing took over and commanded the powers. The second beast had left her while he pushed up flowers. She commanded the nation to commit to his plan. If she cannot do it, then nobody can. All must have his mark, and no exceptions allowed. Pictures of their foreheads on a card held in the hand. All must have it to buy or sell anywhere in the land. Nor could they mask themselves in the crowd. Everyone listened and followed in shame. Everyone knows the number of his name. Revelation chapter 13, verses 11 through 18. Some of this prophecy is about to occur. If it has not already happened by the time this show is recorded and released, it is impossible to determine when any of these prophecies will occur, but it is also advisable to be ready for the possibility by repenting and knowing God is the Holy Spirit. There is no other path to salvation except to believe the message of Jesus Christ and accept His covenant in God's Holy Spirit. This last poem is the prophecy that has become the eternal truth ministry. The refinement of the eternal truth prophecy comes from this prophecy, but there are other parts of the doctrine that have been presented earlier in this prophetic poetry series. There are seven key components of the eternal truth doctrine, and the most important of them might be the truth that Jesus Christ was not the Son of God. I say that this might be the most important because accepting the truth of that statement is going to make the difference for anyone who has struggled to understand the fulfillment of prophecy with regard to the second birth. Without knowledge of the truth, the Holy Spirit will not dwell within you. Accept the eternal truth and the Holy Spirit will surely come upon you. Your first task when accepting the Holy Spirit will be to repent of all the pagan idolatry in your life. If you are not able to complete the first act of repentance, you will not rest until you do. Your soul will yearn for the truth of Almighty God and you will never have peace until you repent of the pagan heresy perpetrated by heretics who ignorantly created the doctrine of Catholicism, which is a blasphemy of Almighty God. It is the abomination of desolation. The Third Woe the eternal truth has become known during the second woe. The truth proclaimed loudly and clearly for the world to know. Repent now, for fall to your knees. Worship the one true God. Ask his forgiveness that his judgment he will stay. None had been told of Caesar's nod. Nobody listened. They turned away. Three gods are always better than one. That is not shown in the Passion Play. It was too late, and the damage was done. The three plagues of death readied their sickles, reaping mankind until all of the earth trickles, blood from its lands flowing into the sea. As it is written, so will it be. This is the last chance for all to know the eternal truth. There, These are the only truths that matter for mankind's salvation. God is eternal. He loves us. He commands us to love each other. Jesus delivered the message and died so God could forgive us. And God wants us to know him in his true form, the Holy Spirit. Forget the past. There is still now and the future. Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 through 20. Well, here we are at the end of the show. I think that uh, everyone who's been following along this show really understands what it's been about. Uh, this has been a message to those who will hear it. And you will only hear it if you have accepted the Holy Spirit and repented of your sins in the baptism by water. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say this one more time. You must be fully baptized in water. You must have been immersed in the, re in the act of repentance. If you have just been sprinkled, 
it's not going to do it. You have got to be completely immersed in water. You have got to have your sins washed away in repentance and then come back up out of the water into the new life ready to receive the Holy Spirit. Just getting a sprinkle isn't going to make it happen. In any case, I hope that uh, everyone makes a good choice and I hope to see all of you after the rapture. Thank you for listening and watching. I am Michael.